All right, amigos, uh, Jeremiah chapter 32. And um, let me pray. God, thanks for this this uh, cool little Bible study. So, so awesome. Just really how the church started and good, uh, good friends, little breakfast, little Bible. So blessed. So pray you'd honor this time and help a lot of people in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Jeremiah 32. And I want to start in verse 33. Uh, before I do, I just wanted to ask you, actually ask you guys one quick thing that you're learning as you're reading through Jeremiah this time. You know, I know you guys, you know, um, you've studied for a while, but just maybe in this season of your life, maybe what you're learning. Yeah. I, I'll Mama, share. yeah, um, go ahead. Um, I feel like it doesn't matter what book of the Bible I'm in. I'm always seeing God hear so much about our nearness to him. And so here, it, I mean, it could sound like wrath when you're reading through the prophets, but here it's just like he hungers and he thirsts for his kids to be with him and to know him. Yep. And every prophet hmm. really just points to his desire for fellowship. And so this book sounds like, I know he's crying for 42 chapters or however many chapters he's yeah. crying, but I feel like it's just a picture of how much God wants us to be near. I was thinking about that, the context of how many times, I mean, you have little kids now, like yep. you're trying to get their attention, you're trying to teach them something and whether they're distracted or they're just straight up disobedient, mm -hmm. they decide not to. And then it's like, dude, I don't want to give you the rod of discipline, but I love you too much not to, right? right. Tell me about your season right now. I mean, would you see a parallel of I would parenting in Jeremiah? I just had a moment yesterday with my with my firstborn, and we had to discipline him. And I was like looking for every opportunity to not have to. And that's one thing that I see that's throughout the yeah. story of Jeremiah too. Is like yeah. God's like, hey, if they like if you preach this message to them, Jeremiah, and they respond to it, I'm looking for a way <laughs> out. I want to change my mind about this. But I also recognize like with my son, he, he just wasn't. And discipline produces the fruit of righteousness. And so I disciplined him and his his disposition changed literally instantaneously. Wow. And so, I mean, that's just a picture of, yeah, it's, it's tricky to look at what God has his people go through, but he really is looking for them to experience their, his best for their right, lives. Right. Not just in this generation, but for generations to come. So. Yeah. And it's so Here's wild because when he creates man with this free will, you know, you have humans, you have one, one or, you know, one, one of two choices. You can respond to him or you can reject him. Yeah. You know, you can stiff arm him, scorch anything you want to add. Just walking in obedience. I mean, just all the warning signs and hmm. being so, you know, ignorant to not speak them. And so. Hmm. Just simple being aware. Aware, obedience, yeah. So simple, old school. All right, let's start in verse uh, 33. And I'll read the first, um, this first verse, because this kind of sets it up. Now, remember this context of Jeremiah, right? His people, he's been trying to, you know, get their attention, just like we're talking about, you know, with kids or, you know, maybe people that you have on your team and you want the best for them and trying to get their attention and they just continue to refuse. It says in verse 33, my people have turned their backs on me and have refused to return. Even though I diligently taught them, they would not receive instruction or obey. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's literally verbatim what we're talking about here. Um, verse 34, they set up their abominable idols, right? In my own temple, defiling it, They've built pagan shrines to Baal in the valley of Ben Hinnom. And there they sacrifice their sons and daughters to Molech. I've never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind wow. to command such a thing. What an incredible evil causing Judah to sin so greatly. Now, I want to say something more about this city. You've been saying it will fall to the king of Babylon through war famine and disease. So remember, just again, you see it contextually through King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, they make a siege wall around the city. And that's, that was God's judgment through, you know, because of them wanting, you know, to continue to stiff arm. And it's almost like he's going to bring the rod of discipline through the King of Babylon. And oh, by the way, he's going to take them back captive. So it's like the rod of discipline and the timeout. I was thinking about how a lot of parents like give a timeout. It's like, you know, Johnny, like you have to sit there for a while. 
It's almost like this is like a picture of a parent trying to get the attention, wow. but it's almost like a combo of the rod and a timeout mm -hmm. as I was reading through that. And it's interesting that we're talking about Labor Day and having rest, why we even did this is to give our staff and you know our key volunteers in the church like a true Sabbath rest mm -hmm. this, this weekend. God had told them every seventh year to give the, the land a rest. Right. And for 490 years, they rejected that. And so here God is like, okay, I've been trying to get your attention, not just from idolatry, but also the Sabbath rest. So I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you a time out for seven years. So he brings the Israelites, you know, the Southern kingdom of Judah in captivity back in Babylon for 70 years. And eventually, and Jeremiah prophesied that the um, Medo-Persian Empire under Cyrus would, would come and they would release the Jews back to Jerusalem to rebuild Jerusalem after King Nebuchadnezzar ransacked the temple, the city destroyed it. So it's an interesting picture of like this rod of discipline and this time out, 70 year time out. So, you know, you take 490 years yep. divided by, you know, each seven, that's 70. There you go. All right. <laughs> That's Very great. Good. All right. You so, still got it. Yeah. The math is still there, right? So anyway, just any thoughts as you guys are reading through this that stick out to you? Well, this first section. One thing, PT, that is so interesting from, you know, that calculation too. 490 years, they neglected to give the land that year of rest every seventh year. So God's like, the math's already, the math's added up whether you like right. it or not. And I think, um, you know, it reminds me not to point back to a message that I did, but it's just it's fresh in my Please mind. Yeah. But when I did the message on um, rest works about how when work doesn't work, rest works and how us resting in the Lord can be the most productive thing we can do. Yeah. What the Lord reminded me of was our friend Brett Elliott. <clears throat> he shared this quote with me. He said, you need to schedule maintenance on your equipment or your equipment will schedule maintenance for you. And the idea is, wow. is that it's like, even with marriage, you know, it's like sometimes people think, well, I don't want to invest in counseling for my marriage. I don't want to invest in a date night that might be too expensive, but you're going to pay for that one way or the other. You're wow. either paying for the smaller investment now and in, in like shorter sprints, or you have to pay a lump sum wow. at the end. And so to me, it's just a, it's a constant reminder that rest should not just be an intense thing that we do one weekend out of the entire year, mm -hmm. but you've modeled, both of you have modeled this really well. We should be creating rhythms of rest that um, give us these checkpoints a lot more frequently. It's so, it's so good. What, what do you think prevents people from developing rhythms of rest? What do you say, babe? Or a couple thoughts from that? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, well, kind of back to what you were saying, like we just sometimes don't have a heart of obedience. Like we might know, we might see in the word and our heart is just like, we're so caught up in so many other things, whether it's our kids sports or we have house tasks that, you know, we have to get done on that day that we should be spending time with the Lord. They end up unfortunately taking priority and they become idolatry. We don't even know it's becoming yeah. an idol, but when anything takes the place of God in our hearts, it's idolatry. And so it seeps in, it slips in, it, we don't see it coming. Yeah. And then all of a sudden our time with the Lord is less. And then it's sad. It's so interesting. Cause just yesterday, you know, I turned my phone off on Monday night and it was like, so Tuesday is my Sabbath, you know, every, every week this personally for me helps me stay healthy. And it was like late afternoon. And it, you know, I hate the, like the two factor, authentication, uh, authentication yeah. or whatever. So I had to turn on my phone just for that. Well, then you turn on the phone and, say, blah, 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 and then you're, you know, you, you have to like fight for that, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't, it's not always easy, Yeah. especially in a busy world, you know, a ton of demand, everything's flying. Any, any tips from you, Taylor, that you would share? I, I, at least for me, I think it's a huge thing with instant gratification and wanting everything right then and there. And mm. so for, it's hard to change your mind when you, get a text and immediately respond. You can pull up something, you have a question, immediately respond to it. Mm. Um, but when it comes to the idea of rest, just, okay, wait, I have to stop what I'm doing. I have to stop my mind. I can't just get it right away. What are you talking about? That's good. So it's a hard trick to turn your mind into. So. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, that's really part of this whole thing is for the church, just continuing to try to help yeah. all of us 
you know, not in a legalistic way. Mm -hmm. I love that Jesus said, um, how do you say it? I didn't make uh, man for the Sabbath, but I made Sabbath yes. for the man. Yes. And I think so that's good. one of the most freeing verses about the Sabbath. Because people will say, well, it's not, we're under the new covenant. Like, and Jesus is my rest. And I, I understand that. But I also know that God created the world in six days. And on the seventh, he, he rested. Chose. He chose to rest. Right. Well, he's God and stuff. He didn't need to, but he was setting a pattern for us. You know, it's like the holy bird Chick-fil-A. Like, I love that they, <laughs> they really mm -hmm. apply that. Not on a legalism or anything, but it's like, I'm going to cooperate with the yeah. rhythm of how yeah. God made us. Great. And there's just something about staying healthy for the long haul. It's so true that he's so patient and kind. Look, like 490 years he waited to have to. Wow, to have oh, that's to a really good point. Oh my God. You know, and so it's not its not like he's in the sky with this hammer going to beat you for not resting, but he knows when you're satiated by him and you spend time, he carries you through your week. And so I, I, you know, I come from a liturgical style background, so it's really easy for me to think it's like, He's mad if I don't rest. That's not it. He just knows what we'll receive from him. And that nearness and fellowship that we get empowers us for the rest of the week. And so, so he's good. so patient. He's so kind. He's so long suffering with our lack and our to respond to him to rest. But he's patient. Sometimes mm -hmm. we give him a, a, an ugly picture, but really it's just he knows what's best. It's really good. Well, even from a practice, it's funny you say that from a practical standpoint, I've seen even people that are workaholics and I love, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'll take probably someone who airs on that side than the, like the, the slacker all day long. So just hear me right. But mm -hmm. I've also seen some people that will work so crazy that they end up in the hospital because yes. yeah. They, yeah. They're, sure. they're overworked or stressed or freaked out. And it's almost like the similar picture here. It's like God's yeah. like, okay, let me give you a forced time out. You're like, yeah, like in, exactly. you're in the hospital for three weeks and I'm trying to help you catch up. And I think that's, that's something powerful that we just need to consider. That That's kind of the illustration here. So, okay, let's look at verse 30. Let's keep on going. Thank you, guys. Um, look at the second part of 36. So remember, he talks about the Babylonians come in, war, famine, disease. And that could be a picture of kind of how we feel right now. But there's good news. Look, But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I will certainly bring my people back again. Mm from all the countries where I will scatter them in my fury. I will bring them back, I love that, to this very city and let them live in peace and safety. They will be my people, I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, one purpose. I love that, isn't that cool? Yes. To worship me forever. Yes. I mean, isn't that really our, that's, that's like purpose. our one purpose, right? And this is interesting, for their own good, isn't that cool? For their own good and for the good of all their descendants. So you said it, it's like, he's not out to get you. He's actually setting this up for a reason because he wants to help. That's that's the power of that. So I love that. Um, and then verse 40, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. Mm. I'll put a desire in their hearts to worship me and they will never leave me. I will find, <laughs> This is good. I will find joy doing good for them and will faithfully and wholeheartedly replant them in this land. Yeah. And it's so cool because when you study, I don't know if you guys caught this, but when you were studying the beginning of Jeremiah 32, God comes to Jeremiah and he says, hey, I have a cousin that's going to come to you and like want to sell you part of his land. And it's in Anathoth or whatever. And this was like when they're going into captivity, everybody's fleeing the area and and God told him to buy it. Like the worst real estate deal you could ever do. <laughs> like as an investor, what are you doing? You're trying to look up for up and coming like yeah. communities and whatnot. And instead it's like, yeah, like go find the property that everybody's fleeing and buy that. But what was the picture of? It was, it was, it was affirming that even though God had to take them out of the land, yep. so it was good. proof. Guess what? Yeah. That land's gonna have value in the future. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna bring you back. Woo. And so, dude, I want to prophetically like That's show like, you, like I'm not exactly. I'm not, not done, done with you, you yet. Yeah. Buy the land, and in faith, this is what's gonna happen in the future. And and that to me is just it's a powerful thing. This picture is confirming the fact. Hey, bro, like I had to bring the rod of discipline, but did you see it? Like I will replant them in this land. Yeah. And I think that's just something. 
I think for me, that I've read in my life where I've fumbled a rock, I've gone off track, God's had to discipline me. Yeah. You know, and yet in his grace, hey man, you might be on the sideline for a while. You might be in a timeout for a while. But I think in that time, so many humans can can feel overwhelmed or like God's never gonna show up again. Right. Or I'm so out of out of order, there's no hope for me. Yeah. And I was thinking like, you know, to the hopeless, man, it's it, that's one of the keys I see in our culture today. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. If I don't have a picture of something possible in the future, even just think practically for a second. What do you like? What do you get soaked about? Like when you ha when you know something's coming up. For sure. Like, dude, it's football season. Like, are you kidding? Like, I have hope again. All right. Like, <laughs> we're good. It's like you're looking forward to something. And if we don't have wow. our eyes on heaven, number one, the hope of heaven. Right. But even just practically, like, God, you okay? You you've forgiven me. You yeah. can replant me, and you can do something new yeah. in my life. Yes. We we just yes. did this with a a bush outside or whatever. That, um, we had to replant. We had to literally pull this plant out. And D Money's like, oh, get the fertilizer and like pour the water <laughs> in. And I just thought, what a perfect picture of Israel. They were ripped out, taken to Babylon, but they're gonna bring, they're gonna be brought back. Wow. And fertilizer and water is gonna is gonna like reaffirm them in their area. And like a great picture of of all of us as humans when we fumble the rock. Like so God's so that. gracious to forgive. You know? yeah. He's so good. I, I actually looked up the words exile and sent and was kind of seeing like, what What did you mean? Like, why did you, why this? And one of the things that I was learning is the word, I can't remember if it was sent or exile, but it means open their ear to instruction. <clears throat> like re revealing. And it said something <laughs> like make naked. And so it's like, you said it earlier when, you're this, it. when you were like right. exposed, expose your thoughts, expose yeah. your sin. You said it earlier when you were talking about disciplining your oldest. After the discipline, there was a change in it, the countenance, yep. you know? And so, and that's exactly what God's hoping for and expecting. Wow. So not only are we hoping because we have a future, but he also is hoping that we get and understand his discipline in those oh. moments, which wow. is so wild because he gives so much grace and so much mercy. Yet he's like, here's a way for you to, under as I discipline you, May you be exposed to yourself, you know, and would you respond the way you want to respond? Isn't it crazy? I think, like, I was just thinking there's probably someone listening, tuning in, and they're at a place where they're almost at that pivotal point where they're like, because I, I do think there's a point where God keeps on trying to get our attention. And some of us are, are like so stubborn or evil that we're like, I don't care how bad it gets. I'm, yeah. I'm stiff arming God. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. is there a point of like no return, you know? I mean, Honestly, I think I saw this when I was studying this because some dudes, when Jeremiah was trying to like tell them, hey guys, Babylon's going to come in. We got to accept our punishment. He's still going to protect us as we're in Babylon. And some people are like, whatever, Jeremiah, yeah. don't speak that. Yep. They threw him in prison and we're like, no. And God's like, at that point, he had to actually take them out. So the people that were like, okay, you know what? We need to accept the rock. We're going to go to Babylon. He protected them. They yeah. thrived. And then they came back and they were replanted. But some of those people it was like yeah. so stubborn, like, no. He had to allow them to go down that route. You ever I don't know. That that I think that's part of the scripture sometimes that we back down from to say, This is truth, man. Like yes. God wants so much the best for us. But there's sometimes we get so stubborn that it's like I think it's encouraging too, because even with the online community, we have a handful of people from all over yeah. been following us for a handful of weeks, months now, um, from all over the world. And one consistent thing that as the online pastor, I've seen people reach out about was, um, Cap, like I've sinned and is God, is God done with me? Is he Man. mad at me? Man. And how do I get back into the relationship with God? And and I, it reminds me of where it says that God does not despise a broken and contrite That's spirit. Right. And so what I love so is good, that, man. you know, we're all jacked up, man. Like I'm still trying to figure out how to do this thing. And I know that I speak on behalf of everybody right here that you, man. we're all in process, yeah. but it's so awesome to see God's heart with two things. One, if you have that heart of God, I am humbled and I do want to change. He can work with that. He wants to work with that. He's quick to work with that. Yeah. But then here, this this part really blows my mind. In verse 40, it says, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I love that. You need to underline that if you're so, listening yeah, right now. Yeah, so. I will never stop doing good for them. 
And then check this out. I will put a desire in their hearts to yeah. worship me. And I was, and we know that in the new covenant, he fills us with his Holy Spirit to give us the power and the desire to do as well. Mm -hmm. I just think, man, God is, it just communicates to me that you could read this book and think that God is looking for an opportunity to discipline you. Mm -hmm. When I see the opposite, right. God is looking for an opportunity to set us up for Amen. success. But will we respond with a humble heart? That's the question. Yeah, that's, just, yeah. <laughs> that's so good. I, it's so crazy because as we're reading this, thank you for clarifying that. Because I think that's one of the biggest confusions in the church today. Mm -hmm. He's out. That's how I grew up. He's out to get you. You get out of line one second, he's going to pulverize you and you're just going to be out and you won't have another chance. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's the exact opposite. Yeah. And it was really helpful to raise children and get that perspective. And because I could feel it, you know, like, bro, can you just please get right? I want to bless you. Mm -hmm. But as a good dad, I couldn't, I had to, you know, discipline. And I had to do that because I, if I didn't, then I'm not training them properly. Correct. And it's not a picture of God's heart, you know? So any event, all right, let's move on. Let's go to um, 42, uh, verse 42. It says, this is what the Lord says. Just as I have brought all these calamities on them, so I will do all the good I have promised mm. them. There you go. That's yeah. right there. Fields, and someone needs to hear this, man, because I, I needed to hear this. Listen to this. Fields will again be bought and sold in this land about yes. which you now say. Again, his his uh, his cousin, Hanamel or whatever, you know, this was a picture of this. It has been ravaged by the Babylonians, a desolate land where people and animals have all disappeared. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about that. Like how many people, that's the current reality, you know, because of sin and bad choices and you know, yeah. in, even circumstances outside of their control, ravaged, desolate, people have disappeared out of your life. Businesses have been desolate, been ravaged, wow. Wow. you know, but look at this promise. Yes. Fields will once again be bought and sold, yeah. deeds signed and sealed and witnessed. <laughs> real estate transactions will happen again, wow. believe it or not, even in this, this, <laughs> this real estate, uh, interest rate chaos, right? Yeah. Um, in the land of Benjamin and here in Jerusalem in the towns of Judah and the hill country, and the Sweet. foothills of Judah and the Negev too. For someday, listen to this, for someday, I will restore prosperity to them. Wow. I, the Lord, have spoken. And I mean, that's, that really is Sweet. this picture, right? I Sweet. think about one of my best friends in ministry who, you know, was struggling with alcoholism, was on his, you know, third or fourth marriage, was just, and he was 50 plus years old. And he came to Christ and he's like, I don't know if God could still work with me in my life, but I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna go all in. I'm done. I'm I'm gonna believe it. And dude, God forgave him, filled him with the spirit. And now this dude is a pastor. He was a pastor in, in Illinois. And now he's all over training Indian pastors to plant churches all over India. What? And revival is happening. And you just think like, okay, and someone might be listening and going, there's no way God can restore my life. I love, what's it, Joel 2.25. I will restore the yeah. years yeah. before I said yeah. And the only thing that is, is getting in the way of the restoration is the repentance. That's it. And for, for my buddy Jim, he was like, I'm tired of this reality. Mm. I've been making these choices. God, I need yeah. help. And then I'm going to put practical barriers in. I need to be surrounded by the right people. It was so cool because he would, this was at the church in Boca. And he's like, put me in coach, whatever you need. And so he would, he would sweep, he would serve, he would whatever. And on Wednesday nights, finally, after a few months, I'm like, all right, bro, I'm, I'm bouncing. I got to get with my wife. Here's the keys to the church. I literally gave him the keys. It's like lock up and make sure everything's on point. And that was like the beginning of this, this ministry process of restoring. Uh, God brings him a godly wife, reconnects with his kids. I mean, it's just, and some people think it's, I'm too far gone. Yeah. Yes. It's like, no, man, that don't believe that. Uh, so, good. So, good. so good. So good. So, hey, man. we're, no, what were we going to say? You no, it's thought. funny because that picture of giving the keys, it's like the same, this translation says a little bit different. It says, for I will cause the captives to return, says the Lord. It's like he gives you wow. the keys to maintain relationship instead of, and so it's funny that that's the picture that you use. Like he gives us keys of repentance, keys of worship, keys of praise, so that we learn and understand what it looks like to be with him. It's so cool. 
I love that illustration. That's cool. Oh, it's so fun. The restorative power. Preaching, like, man. Let me, let me read this. This is really cool because I, I like staying in context. I love like even our small groups. You know, this feels kind of like a small group. Yeah. I love encouraging people. Don't make the church too big. Four to 14. We're even trying to shrink it maybe four to eight. So you can share what you're reading from the daily reading. And then, but keep it in context. This is interesting. In Ezra 1, listen to this, 1 through 3. Check this out. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah. He stirred the heart of Cyrus to put this proclamation in writing and to send it throughout his kingdom. Jeez. Listen to this. This is what King Cyrus of Persia says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He's appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, <laughs> the place they got extract extracted. Any of you who are his people may go to Jerusalem and Judah to rebuild the temple, the God of Israel who lives in Jerusalem, and may your God be with you. So think about that. Like mm. Jeremiah is predicting this. God uses Cyrus, like this this pagan king, yeah, dude. <laughs> like goes, hey boys, so crazy. get back to Jerusalem and rebuild it. And, and here's what I would say, maybe this is how we can land, is man, God, that's what God says. Like, yeah. like dude, you've been in captivity, you've had the rod of discipline, a little time out, get back, let go. Mm. You have freedom to go back to Jerusalem. And here's wow. the thing, when they went back, it wasn't an easy road. Sometimes I think we think, ah, oh, I've been this, you know, like, to God for 40 years and yeah. four days, I want my life to be rebuilt. Like it's a process, you know, day by day in the word, in a group, you know, serving the Lord, yep. letting him do it, but cooperating with the Holy Spirit. So, hey, man. And that was so cool, see, man. Like, ah, 66 books in the Bible, all of yes. them all working together. And, and when there wasn't a way, God made a way. He made a way. In such a way where only he could get the credit. It's exactly it. right. It's and, you know, you look at our culture today. I mean, we are we are Judah. Let's be honest. We are Judah, dude. Our our country. And it's like we can either go, you know what? Uh, he can't do anything. Or we could be like the fixer, the worst fixer-upper that Chip and Joanna did. You know, you would just scrap the whole thing. No, we're not scrapping it. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the bones of that. We're going to take all the junk out. We're going to restore it and see the beauty of the anointing of, of Chip, Chip, Chip and Joanna. By the way, whoever knows Chip Gaines, I need to, I need to meet that guy. That's <laughs> <laughs> like my hero, man. All right, Kat, pray, pray us out. Or yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm going to, sweetheart, mama. Yeah, let's not do money. Let's pray. do money. Pray us out of this, please. Okay. I'm just so thankful, God. Yeah. We are so thankful, Thank God. You. It Lord. is a treasure in our hearts and in our minds to know how patient you are, mm. how kind you are, how good you are, the length that you go to, the way that you say, I just, I can't think of Jeremiah's life and uh, feel like some sort of conviction because of what you allowed him to endure so that we could know your kindness. And so, God, we give you praise for the way that you've sent so many to teach us you so many have walked in obedience to teach us and that's what we just pray today that we would hunger and thirst for hearts of obedience that we would understand how um quickly you desire for us to return like we have the yeah. opportunity to return now we don't have to wait 10 15 20 years and so god for people today who may or may not um that we come into contact with that may or may not believe that would you give us words and understanding of how to approach each and every person so that they would know your love, your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness, and your willingness to allow time for people to repent. And so we love you. We give you this day. We say you are worthy. Yes. We're named Jesus. And bless your people as they rest yes. and recuperate yes. and rejuvenate with their families and friends so we can continue to send it and be a blessing all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.